iCloud can be pretty complicated if you're new to the Apple ecosystem. So today, I'm going to be exploring briefly what iCloud is and how it works, how to manage your storage so that you never receive this notification ever again, pricing options and benefits, and the settings you need to enable to help make sure your photos and data are always backed up and safe. So let's get straight into it. What's up guys, this is Shiv, and welcome back to another video. So let's briefly talk about what iCloud is and how it works. At its core, iCloud is a cloud storage service that's designed to securely store and sync your photos, videos, documents, and other data across all of your Apple devices. So once you take a photo on your iPhone or create a document on your MacBook, for example, it gets saved in iCloud and synced across all your devices. Think of it like a password protective safe that stores all your information and shares that information automatically with all of your devices. Now, when you put an item in a safe, it means that it's stored there securely and you no longer have the item on you. And the same goes with iCloud. Once your documents and photos are backed up to iCloud, only an optimized low storage version is still saved to your phone, meaning you're able to offload files that take up a lot of memory from your phone. Let's look at my phone storage and iCloud as an example. I have a 128 gigabyte iPhone and I'm currently using 110 gigabytes of that. And you can see my photos take up around 14 and a half gigabytes. If we go to my photos app, I've got 29,000 photos and 900 videos. And there's no way that only takes up 14 and a half gigabytes of storage. So what's happening here? The reality is that around 95% of my photos data is being stored in the cloud. And we can check this if we go to iCloud settings and press photos. You can see that 159 gigabytes of storage has been offloaded from my phone and sent to iCloud. And keeping in mind that I only have a 128 gigabyte iPhone, I wouldn't be able to have all these photos and videos if I didn't have an iCloud plan. The main setting behind this is optimize iPhone storage. This is on by default. And as I mentioned, it basically means your full resolution photos and videos are automatically replaced with small optimized versions. But that said, you still have access to those full resolution versions as well. For example, if I click on a picture taken over a year ago, it shows me a low resolution optimized version whilst it downloads the picture from iCloud. And within a few seconds, I've then got the full resolution picture to look at. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to drop me a like and subscribe to my channel. iCloud is built into every Apple device. And to start off, Apple gives you five gigabytes of storage for free, but you'll find that you burn through that very quickly. You then have the option of subscribing to iCloud Plus, which gives you more storage and enhanced privacy features like iCloud Private Relay and Hide My Email. And there are five levels you can choose from, which start from 50 gigabytes of storage for 99 cents a month, all the way up to 12 terabytes of storage for 59.99 a month. You can also opt for an iCloud family sharing plan so that your family can share a single iCloud storage plan large enough to store everyone's photos, videos, and files, but also share the cost. And yes, each person's files and documents remain completely private. So what are the benefits of iCloud and do they outweigh the costs? The benefits of iCloud in terms of its features are very clear. It essentially allows you to store your data in a secure location whilst maintaining your privacy, freeing up valuable space on your devices and allowing you to access your files from anywhere. But aside from that, also consider if your phone was to get damaged, lost or even stolen. Even though you may have lost your physical device, as long as you've turned on iCloud backup, you can be confident that you haven't lost your data and photos. So when you get a new device, you can simply restore your data from iCloud. This is honestly such an important feature and it's difficult to put a price on those photo memories, documents and data that you may have otherwise lost. In terms of cost, I personally have a family plan that I share. So we have the two terabyte family plan, which costs 9.99 a month and I currently use around 220 gigabytes of iCloud storage. If you add the 110 gigabytes of storage I use on my phone, my data totals 330 gigabytes. So if I were to just have all my iCloud on my phone and nothing in iCloud, I'd have needed to buy the 512 gigabyte iPhone instead of 128 gigabyte iPhone, which would have cost me $300 more for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So this way, I'm actually saving money by using iCloud, paying a small monthly fee instead of $300 up front. And I have the peace of mind that all my data is backed up automatically to the cloud. It's a win-win situation. Lastly, I'm going to go through the settings you need to make sure that all your photos, documents, and data 
are being backed up properly. Go to settings, click on your profile, then iCloud, and this is where you can see what data is being saved and backed up to iCloud. If you press photos, you want to make sure that photo syncing is on and optimized photo storage is selected. You also want to make sure that iCloud drive syncing is on and this will help make sure your documents are synced across your devices and passwords and keychain is on too. More generally, you can see that I've got all my apps syncing on iCloud, including notes, messages, and health data. Then moving down to iCloud backup, you should enable backup this iPhone and I like to keep backup over mobile data on as well so that my phone is constantly backing up to iCloud instead of just when connected to Wi-Fi. So that covers how iCloud works and its costs and benefits. There are so many other aspects of iCloud that I haven't covered in this video. So let me know in the comments below if you want a separate video on iCloud's main features and how to use it properly. As always, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.